Hi guys, welcome back to another edition of MHI's Roundtable Discussion. I'm joined here today as usual by my brother Carlos, by Dr. Rudy, and today we have the great pleasure and honor of being joined by Dr. Mark Gordon, who first of all is one of the smartest human beings we know <laughs> on planet Earth, sure. one of the most noble men, and a true altruistic medical warrior. Professionally, Dr. Mark Gordon is a world-renowned neuroendocrinologist and brain health expert recognized with numerous accolades and awards for his dedication to advancing medical knowledge and techniques. Dr. Gordon is also the medical director for Millennium Health Centers, overseeing more than 100 independent TBI facilities throughout the world and has been lecturing on the neuroendocrinology of TBI since 2007 particularly giving generously of his time and improving the lives of our veterans, which is his deep life mission and very dear to him. Dr. Gordon has also been interviewed by various media outlets and podcasts over the years, including Joe Rogan, Montel Williams, Forbes, ESPN Sports, wow. NBC News, The Wall Street Journal, among many others. <laughs> My God, I, I don't list. remember any of them. <laughs> so, Doc, thank you so much for coming out here today. We feel truly privileged to be in the presence of a legend and to have the honor of this unique opportunity to get together with you one on one to discuss your remarkable life's work. Thank you. Thank I you. really, Amen. I really appreciate it. But I don't like to be referred to as a legend because most legends <laughs> that I know are dead. <laughs> you know. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> please, other than that, uh, anything, I'm anything here. Else Hopefully, you'll be the guy from here that doesn't happen to. <laughs> now, now I, I will say one, uh, you know, one thing that Mike left out. Uh, Dr. Mark also has one of the most difficult tests on the planet. Uh, you know, it took us <laughs> three dudes, uh, countless hours, I think it was like 12 hours to finish. I mean, he was the cause of my heartburn, nightmares for many days. But, you know, uh, what a class on endocrinology and the cascading effect of hormones, which we're going to talk about. And thank you for providing us with a lot of bonding time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, Well, you succeeded. Yes. That's the key. You know? <laughs> so for everybody listening, that was a great introduction. Oh really, God. that doesn't even capture how yeah, amazing right. you are. You know, we, we have to say all those things. But going to all those conferences all the time was always eye-opening for us. You know, we have a clinic where we do a uh, hormone replacement, but it goes way beyond this. Yeah. Well, it's all about optimization. Correct. But what we've learned from you about the science of the brain and how traumatic brain injury is such a catalyst for all those hormonal deficiencies yeah. that we see. So can you tell us first, traumatic brain injury, let us know what you're doing exactly. Okay. Well, first off, I think it's important that we understand what traumatic brain injury or TBI really is. For me, traumatic brain injury is a process and that process is caused by a physical trauma, being hit on the head, a motor vehicle accident, exposure to um, IEDs, blast wave trauma, or chronic stress, or surgery. And what any of these things can do is turn on inflammation in the brain. And it's like a little fire that starts in the brain. And if you don't put that fire out, what will happen is it'll grow into a forest fire and it'll encompass all the parts of the brain, creating damage to the regulatory system, the control mechanisms for the production of our hormones. And the hormones are extremely important for who we are and our brain's ability to heal itself. In the area of neuroendocrinology, which is how it's an area of biological science, where the hormones of the brain interact with our nervous system. Mm -hmm. What's in our nervous system? Our behavior, our emotions, and our cognitive, our mental abilities. So when you have trauma to the brain, traumatic brain injury of whatever form, it will interrupt those hormones which need to be replenished. Ooh. Wow. That is great. Um, th this is so important. One thing you said that was important for me is I always thought somebody's character, somebody's um, way of being was fixed in time. Mm. And now we realize we're only as strong as our hormones. Correct. Our hormones determine who we are, how we behave. So we've seen people that were the most positive, the most confident um, individuals, and they sustained some injury that causes an, a, ho a hormone deficiency, and you see it's a completely different person. Absolutely. Turn into a mouse. And something I learned in your book that was really interesting is that this 
traumatic brain injury, and you're gonna talk about the mild traumatic brain injury, yeah. that right. is the most common form, can happen years before. Yeah. So now you don't even think about the event. Absolutely. All you see is the change in personality, the depression, everything that comes, the substance abuse, and you don't think about the prior event. You just think, what's going on with this person? Absolutely. Uh, traumatic brain injury has three different f levels of uh, severity. The most common one, which is the arena that I deal in, is called mild traumatic brain injury, and that's about 85% of all cases of traumatic brain injury. And what the doc was saying is very true. You can have a traumatic brain injury 15 years ago, 12 years ago, and not think of it. You could have been knocked down, but not unconscious. And you get up, you brush yourself off, and you stand up, and you go back to life. As most our veterans are doing when they're out in the field, or our active military out in the field, they might be exposed to a mild blast trauma, or a, a scud rocket, or a mortar shell 20 feet away. They get knocked down, they stand up, and they get going. And what happened at that moment is it started a process of inflammation in the brain. Now, you don't feel the inflammation in the brain, but what happens over time as it slowly etches away at the control centers of the brain, producing the hormones that help to regulate our emotional well-being, you start, start seeing symptoms and effects. And what happens is an individual goes to a doctor and says, you know, recently I've had problems with my libido or I'm depressed or I'm emotionally reactive or I can't read like I used to or I'm not finding things pleasurable in life anymore. And the doctor says, fine, you're depressed. Yeah, and never asked whether or not they have something mm -hmm. that's equivalent to a traumatic brain injury, a mild traumatic brain injury. We now have a classification we're calling micro traumatic brain injury, wow. where it's even less than someone who gets a mild uh, concussion mm -hmm. or mild traumatic brain injury. And over time, it creates this cascade, this accumulation of inflammation. And what we found is 17 years after the initial injury, we're still finding the chemical markers in the brain, in the blood, that indicate that inflammation or trauma occurred that led to inflammation. So we know, wow. 17 wow. years. And you, wow. you know what's really interesting about this, as I was thinking about our interview a couple of days ago, um, you know, we didn't, you know, we didn't grow up with this, but the American culture uh, is a culture that, and, and, and it's a very cool thing that we have a lot of sports. I mean, there's a uh, there's a whole multi-billion dollar industry behind sports and, you know, and, and that's a cool thing, right? So you have uh, so many kids that grow up trying to become the superstar, whether it's basketball or soccer or football. And I think about when you when you say micro TBIs right. about all those kids that could have gone concussed because, you know, we see the superstars, we see the teams. But what about all those people that try to get there at some point or had the dream of becoming an athlete and, you know, were concussed or fell and then right. that... Um, created this whole cascading event where now we see people that completely change in personalities and it could be linked to one minor event right. in their childhood, you know, when they were uh, hit in the head. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, what we see are um, children who have been in Pop Warner, which is very young football. Mm -hmm. Correct. Or they're playing, doing uh, martial arts right. with uh, contact, whether or not it's jujitsu or you know, Muay or whatever the situation is. And the parents will state that the child suddenly developed a change in personality. Mm -hmm. They were great students in school and then all of a sudden nothing happened. I recently had a case, he's 16 years of age, who was in his science class and some device on the ceiling, 30 pounds, fell and hit him on the head. Within a very short period of time, he developed depression. He went mm -hmm. from a straight age student oh. being straight downhill wow. and he was getting in trouble. He was smoking, smoking, you know, right. doing drugs and so forth and drinking alcohol at 16. And so we ended up doing what we do in our practice and it took six months. He was back being normal, back to wow. his pre-injury state. And that's addressing the hormonal deficiencies and addressing the inflammation that's caused by the trauma. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Talking about traumas, can you elaborate a little bit between the difference between a TBI and PTSD? Absolutely. And what are the differences and symptoms and all that? Yeah, well, um, TBI, as I said, is the trauma that initiates an inflammatory process in the brain, which affects the chemistry of the brain. Well, if you acutely early on fix that, correct that, the person does not progress on to develop 
other symptoms that you might call depression, bipolar, obsessive compulsive, or anxiety. But if you do not intervene early, this inflammation starts damaging more and more areas of the brain and you start adding more and more symptoms. And when you get to a certain grouping of symptoms, they like to label things mm -hmm. and they call it PTS, PTSD, whatever. ADD, and ADHD, anxiety, all the... All, all those <laughs> all things, the, all, the all those things, they right. label things. Right. And I'm not a great believer in these labels because once you label someone, the person will start identifying living. with it. Yeah, we were, we were uh, uh, said to be ADHD, and I was ADHD plus <laughs> plus. Oh, I, I, I believe you. That. That. That's, that's a true diagnosis. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's believe a true one. Believe I like it. It makes me very active. I'd rather be active <laughs> yeah. than asleep. Check his testosterone. <laughs> yeah. There are a number uh, of stunt level. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> there are a number of articles that talk about deficiencies of uh, testosterone and DHT associated with uh, ADD and ADHD, mm. and by replenishing. Uh, yeah. levels of, uh, of testosterone and making sure your DHEA and DHEA, some of the androgens, some of the male hormones right. have to be elevated. That's right. And oh, they found it. Work on that. Our DHEA is really it's, low. It's, it's over really really yeah. yeah. But that might just fix me, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> You're beyond that. I don't think there's fixing you. But. <laughs> let, 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 me, let me go back uh, to, to something again. Uh, you know, I, yeah. I read your book. I reread it. Well, I he never said it. He, about his book. I am so sorry. The Traumatic, Traumatic Brain, Brain Injury book. book. Oh, oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. How do we so, need so that? Us, we, we have to read that book. <laughs> it's amazing. But one of the surprising statistics for me was when you said after a TBI, after a mild TBI, the chance of having one or more hormonal deficiency. Mm -hmm. now, correct me if I'm wrong, I, thought, I think it was 56% Absolutely. within the first six months and 36% within the, the next 12 correct. months. He's a great student. Those yeah. numbers are crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, my interest, our interest, we, we see patients of all ages, but for some reason, younger men find us. So our average age of our patients seeking hormonal um, um, therapy is in mid thirties and forties. Mm -hmm. So when you think about it, most of the guys, those guys have played some kind of sports. Yep. Most of those guys have had this. I, I did my talk today about endocrine disrupting chemicals. Mm -hmm. So now you think about a young man who's been exposed to endocrine chem this, um, EDCs chemicals. his whole life, mm -hmm. gets a couple of mild TBIs, What's his risk of having a hormonal um, imbalance? It's very high. It's really high. Very Huge. high. That's yeah. why we're seeing in our society now, we're seeing this epidemic of hormonal insufficiency, which again for men, it's mostly testosterone deficiency. Mm -hmm. There are so many causes, mm -hmm. so many things that can cause it. Absolutely. Yeah.